hiring managers of Reddit. What's your favorite they were perfect until we Googled them story? Story one, I was interviewing a chef for my business. The interview went great, and he had an excellent resume. Worked at some top restaurants in the world, three Michelin star type places. Even did a short cooking test with some spare ribs, and they were incredible. There was some stiff competition, though, so eventually we decided to look at everyone's Facebook profiles. One of his old profile pics was him at a Mardi Gras parade dressed as Pikachu with a big dildo strapped on. He got the job. I mean, as far as chefs go, that'd be pretty much what you'd hope for. Story 2. Oh, I've got a good one. We hired a new entry-level graphic designer. Let's call him Will. He had talent and a decent portfolio, but there were some strange things right from the beginning. For example, he would always come in wearing expensive suits, despite our being a jeans and t-shirt office, and his having a very low-paid position. We didn't care much about that. No clue how he affords the wardrobe, and that's none of our business. He's a designer, and I guess he likes to look nice. The weirdest thing is that he adamantly refused to accept direct deposit for his paycheck. He wanted a physical check every other week. Strange, but okay. So one evening, we're all working really late on a project together. We got some bottles of wine around, some pizzas, etc. It's miserably long hours, but we're a good team and having a good time. All of a sudden, Will looks up from his computer and freaking runs as fast as he can out the door. Not a word to any of us. He just dashes out. We all look at each other, trying to call him, with no answer. We finish up the project and go home, still wondering what happened. The next day, Will doesn't come to work. He doesn't come in the next day, either. We tried calling his emergency contact, but didn't get any response, either. So we Google him and see the FBI press release. Turns out he was arrested about 500 miles from our office a few hours after I ran out. I guess he got the tip that the FBI was onto him and decided to make a run for it. Turns out he'd been defrauding payroll companies for years, to the tune of about $1 million. That's why he didn't want direct deposit for his paycheck. What we didn't know was that we processed our physical checks through the same payroll company as our direct deposit, and they reported his new address to the FBI. Story 3. Had a guy apply for an entry-level post with us recently. His CV was okay, so we offered him an interview. Social media seemed okay, too. He never turned up for the interview. A couple of weeks later, there's a story about him in the local paper. Turned out he was living at the local boarding house and was found in the kitchen one morning, totally wasted, wearing nothing but a pair of socks. When a couple of women who also lived there tried to escort him back to his room, he got violent and assaulted them. Given the dates stated in the paper, he didn't turn up because he'd been in jail at the time of the interview. His resume has now been added to the Do Not Touch with a 10-Foot Barge Pole section in our filing cabinet. Story 4 not the hiring manager, but I was the intern responsible for checking references and running backgrounds at our company. And this was in my first week when I was just learning how to go about things. This guy did great in the interview, so I got the go-ahead to run a background check and call his references. Something popped up in the background, so I had to call the police station to figure out how to get a copy of the police report, since whatever happened had just happened. I talked to someone on the phone and gave them his name and who I was and what I was calling for. After doing so, whoever I was talking to didn't know how to go about obtaining the information on her end. She put me on a brief hold, then took a callback number and promised to call me back with some info. Well, it's a good thing neither of us knew what to do because I received a call from the police department less than an hour later. An officer told me, I'm really not supposed to be doing this, but I just wanted to let you know that the interview guy had been arrested for carjacking a woman, and that woman works at your company. He saw the company name and the guy's name and warned us. I'm so grateful, too. If you hired him, they could have carpooled. Story 5. I was a restaurant manager and the owner hired this guy as a chef without doing basic research, which he did a few times. Anyway, the guy said he won several awards and worked with celebrities. The guy was a total d*** to everyone on staff. I decided to Google him. The first hit is a mugshot from a dr*** rest. Then more articles, one where he lied about getting a James Beard award from a previous restaurant he worked at, a comment about him owing 25000 or something to his former boss. The only positive restaurant review he had was from 1990. I came in after the weekend to show my boss this stuff when I learned he was fired the night before for exposing himself to one of the waitresses. Story 6. I was hiring for our late night shifts, shifts ending at 2 a.m. and 3 a.m and she was willing to work anything and looking for about 25 hours per week. This was absolutely what the company was looking for. She had mentioned that she was grieving her little boy who passed two weeks ago and needed something to occupy her time. She finished her one day of computer training and stopped showing up. 
Later in the week, she sent me an email stating that she wasn't ready to come back to work like she'd thought, which was understandable. My assistant manager and I decided to look her up only to find that she had multiple GoFundMe pages set up for a sob story with different amounts of time that the supposed child had been dead for. Her Facebook was full of selfies and party photos. She ended up asking for the job back a few months later and we shot her down pretty quickly. Story 7 A really nice clean-cut young man from a nearby college applies in my shop. Sweet, friendly, outgoing, and smart, he was perfect, until we googled him. He had a last name that was the same as the girl I had gone to school with. So I googled his name and found his Facebook and discovered that he was actually her little brother. I immediately called my friend, his sister, and said, Hey, your brother just applied to my shop. I'm going to hire him. She said, Sweet, free ice cream. So he was perfect until I googled him. And then he was even better. He worked for me for two years and was an absolute delight. Story 8. We had a near miss, one senior hire. We were talking about him and how something seemed a little off when we googled him. It was like he didn't exist at all and the odd super positive tidbit of information that was always a bit too much of a stretch to be completely believable. I mean, one or two people saying you're the best thing on earth is one thing, but this was like all you got were these sporadic and hypermanic observations. One of the junior members of the team pipes up at this point. She's overheard what we're talking about. Turns out she's worked the last two places he's worked, and he's like a locust. He's extremely good at his job, but an absolute nightmare in all other ways. Sexual harassment, bullying, turning up wasted. He's a real niche skill set. There are always more roles than people to fill, so he hops along, bullies everyone out of the role in his team, and brings in his honorage to the point where almost anyone normal rage quits because the atmosphere is so toxic. Then when HR tries to step in, he hits them with a constructive dismissal case and drags lawyers in so there's no paper trail. She said he'd done it at her last job and the one before. It's one of those things that once you know, you start to notice stuff. So at events, when somebody mentioned this guy's name, half the table would just give each other a look and the others would have no idea. It's not quite an open secret, but it's definitely on the grapevine anecdotally if not formally. Glad we dodged that bullet. Please tell me that junior member got a little something for saving your ass. Story 9. Somewhat the reverse. I was sharked out by a guy who was running his own startup and looking for talent in my specific field. I liked the look of his company, his business model seemed viable, his salary was competitive, and he offered equity. I was bored with my current position, so it was tempting. Out of curiosity, I googled him and the email he contacted me through, his name was really common, thinking maybe he'd used it to register anywhere else. His startup had no Glassdoor profile. I found a bunch of posts by him on a South African forum that was really, really racist against black people. He used the N-word at least once and was really aggressive. I declined the offer and I linked to him what I found that sealed my decision. He responded back saying he wished I'd reconsider and that those comments were for somebody else. He used his LinkedIn profile photo as his avatar. He registered on the site with the email he contacted me with. That's how I found him. I thought that was clear, but I suppose not. Always look up your potential employers, kids. Story 10. Had a guy come in to apply for a dump truck job. Seemed okay, very well spoken, and clean cut. Not the type you usually see applying for a job driving a dump truck. He told me he had a PhD in psychology and had his own driving while intoxicated counseling business, but his wife divorced him and he lost everything. So I googled him. He wasn't lying, but the story goes much deeper. Turns out his wife was cheating on him, and when he found out where the boyfriend lived, he snorted almost enough coke to give himself a heart attack and went to his wife's house where his wife's car was parked. He shot 30 rounds from an AR-15 into the house and the car with them inside the house. Somehow he got off with only six months in jail and probation. Obviously, you can't trust someone with a horrible aim to dump stuff in the right spot. Story 11. I used to manage a group home for developmentally disabled adults. I was in charge of hiring the staff that we needed to make the house run properly. I saw a name come across my desk that I had to interview and I instantly looked them up. Turns out this was a girl that had an obsessive crush on me from years ago and on her social media she still did. I was in a panic because she was basically stalking everything I did and I really couldn't back out because it was 5 minutes before the interview. She came in and it was so weird. She acted normal. We interviewed in a professional manner for about 15 minutes, showed her around, and I thought, wow, maybe she's done some maturing and I just let it go. Then we got back to my office. It started a sentence like, well, 
insert name here, it's been a pleasure having you here. And I, oh, no, 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 we're not done yet. You think you can ignore everything like you don't know what's going on? I know where you work now. I know where you live, and I'm going to keep calling. There was more she was saying along the lines of me telling her to kindly leave. But a phone call to the police, as well as a restraining order, kept her away from my work and my life. Story 12. We were narrowing the group down to two to three candidates. We then Google, Facebook, LinkedIn them, and get to one that was in the top two. Their FB was completely open to the public to view everything. Lots of racist, sexist comments. Risque photos of them with some slight nudity. Was too bad. Their resume was quite good. Just not something we would consider appropriate. And this is why I tell you soon-to-be college graduates to lock down that profile. You make your public profile a nice and professional photo of you, including your basic bio information and a few posts that are wholesome. The rest is locked to only friends. Story 13. Little different, but a story that always entertained me. I worked for a staffing agency. The guy is hired and comes in for a background and drug screen. He has lots of priors, but he was working in a kitchen, so we got the okay to continue the process. It wasn't until after the drug screen that he got a little nervous. I told him that we're going to do a drug screen now, and he asked me to put it off until Monday. Typically, we'd have to do it that day so they could start work, but this was like 4.45 on a Friday, and we wanted to go home, so we said yes. Monday rolls around, and he shows up. He takes the test and it comes up positive for weed, cocaine, and some other stuff. We told him that we test multiple things and that cocaine also showed up. We asked him if that was a surprise. He told us, I dabble in cocaine, but I thought this was a test for weed. We politely said that we couldn't hire him. There are so many weird stories from working at a staffing agency. Story 14 Years ago at my previous company, a few co-workers met a young man interested in a software development position with us at a local trade conference and invited him to come interview with us later that afternoon. Said fellow eagerly provided the link to his blog. The top post was about being recently released on probation after a stint for illicit sales and how his upstream supplier was kind enough to front him some startup capital and some new inventory to resume his little side gig. And his previous stash was allegedly confiscated during a previous visit by law enforcement. Coworkers and I decided to read a few more posts just to make sure we didn't confuse him for the wrong guy and inadvertently got him the wrong link. Sure enough, a few photos and some older posts confirmed it was the same guy. We managed to get a little additional work done in the rest of the afternoon between speculation as to when his apparent commitment to full public disclosure would land himself back in the clink and whether we ought to even mention having checked out his blog. We all had to try very hard to keep a straight face when he did come in for his interview. He actually was reasonably knowledgeable when it came to the job, and somehow we managed to completely avoid the question of his side gig in recreational pharmaceutical sales. We gave him an a for honesty and an F for good sense. He was not extended an offer of employment. Story 15. Where I work, they hired a guy who was great at the job and a nice, quiet employee. His background check took forever to clear for some reason, but it ultimately came back clean. Eventually, he said he needed to take a day off for court, but he just never came back after that day. Upon looking into it, he had been found guilty of sexual misconduct with a minor. Two counts. That must have been why it took so long to come back. They were unsure if it should be reported since it was pending. Big sigh. Story 16. This happened earlier this week. Near perfect resume. Guy has quite relevant experience up until about four years ago and has been trying to get his own startup off the ground since then. It's not working out. No big deal. Most don't. So he's looking for another job. Of course, I go and Google his startup. It's complete and utter crap. He's been trying to get people to invest in the equivalent of a perpetual motion machine. Not that, but a similarly fanciful concept of another type. No wonder he couldn't get any investment or traction of any other type. So yeah, hard pass. Story 17. Pre-Google era, but I think it fits the question. Family owned a trucking company. Literally everyone in my immediate family has or had a commercial driver's license. Mom's turn to take a newbie for the road test pre-hire. During the road test, they were involved in an accident. They were hit while stopped. The company was based out of Indiana. The accident happened in Illinois. Newbie gets arrested on the spot. Come to find out he has warrants that hadn't been out long enough for the background check service we used to get them yet. One of the warrants, stalking a female dispatcher from the previous trucking company he worked for. Story 18. 
I was interviewing a much older guy for a similar position to mine. Everything seemed okay, and he was our best candidate. Before moving forward, I did a quick Google search only to find that he was fired from a previous job because of stealing $5,000 worth of computer equipment. My director hired him anyway. Well, he's already got the equipment he needs. We should be fine, they said. Story 19. Our organization was secular, though it had been originally founded by a Catholic bishop, and the organization's purpose was to resettle refugees coming into the U.S. for the first time. If you've done anything related to refugee resettlement, you'd know that 1. Many if not most of refugees coming to the U.S. are fleeing religious persecution of some variety, and 2. The USCCB, or United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, is one of the largest players in the entire process, bringing over about 30% of total refugees that come to the U.S. Also, it should be noted that our staff was extremely multi-ethnic and diverse, with many of the staff being former refugees themselves. Had a candidate, and she seemed fine. Googled her. Holy intolerance Batman. Found a whole blog she wrote about atheism. Okay, that's not a problem, but it was violent atheism. Things like how people who are caught in religious conflicts deserve to die for worshipping any sort of god that they got what was coming to them. Now she can't stand to be around people who worship any sort of god. Basically, her entire online presence was, if you believe in a deity, you are awful and deserve to die in a fire. She also didn't seem to be a big fan of non-white people either. Hard pass on that one. Story 20 all right, I apologize in advance, but this needs some setup. I worked for a service company. Do you know how places will outsource things like food service to Sodexo? Just hand off the entire department? That was how our company operated, except we specialized in maintenance, housekeeping, and laundry. I worked in the healthcare section of this place. I was assigned to a large nursing home and basically given charge of the whole department. I was a department head and sat at the big table with the director of social work. The only difference was that they were employed by the facility and I was getting paid by a third-party company. This is important because, to all outsiders, I worked for this nursing home and so did my entire staff. We were constantly hiring housekeepers. It was a terrible job and the pay was horrific. You could make more money as a cashier at a convenience store without ever having to haul around giant tractor-sized garbage bags full of poopy adult diapers. So we always had jobs posted, and I always kept a stash of applications at the ready. One day I get a call from the front desk saying someone wants to happily apply. I'm busy. Fill out the app and leave it. Nope, she's insistent that she needs to see me. This is a big red flag given the terrible nature of this work. If you're that desperate for a job that is this terrible, then there is usually a frightening reason. But I meet her anyway. She's nice, but seems a bit off. Her work history is solid. She seems motivated, but there's just something striking me odd about this woman. She's early 60s. After she leaves, I immediately call my counterpart at the last place she worked. What she didn't know was that we both worked for the same company. That if she came to work for me, she'd be working back at the same company she just left. She likewise didn't know that we had the contractor for all but two nursing homes in that 50-mile radius, and we were in close touch. As soon as I mention the name, the other manager just yells, Nope! into the phone. She had been a certified nursing assistant, or CNA, but she was fired by that facility. She was brought back in as a housekeeper because we had two different HR systems and she slipped through by switching shifts. She had been fired as a CNA for trading hand jobs for drugs. She'd tug off an elderly resident in exchange for their pills, basically. As soon as the other guy found out, he fired her, but not before complaints hit his desk that the new housekeeper was up to her old shenanigans. Come to find out that her long career was actually far worse than it looked on paper. She was a licensed practical nurse for years, but lost her license and job for stealing drugs. She became a CNA because, at the time in my state, CNAs were certified not by the state, but by private facilities. You got to call yourself a CNA if an RN worked through the 15-hour state-mandated training with you, but you just had no proof of completion for the course as evidence of this. You didn't actually get licensed by the state, which is no longer the case. So basically, she would just change her job title. Jobs where she was a nurse on a resume became jobs where she was a CNA. Then, after the shoe dropped, she just went back and said she'd been a housekeeper the whole time. She resurfaced some years later doing private duty personal care. Story 21. I hired a girl and she interviewed well. The first day, she threw up some red flags, but I figured I was misjudging or misinterpreting. People start missing money and one of my belongings disappears. 
which had never happened prior to her hiring. She was insulting everyone and making customers uncomfortable, and I wanted her gone, less than four weeks from her start date, but didn't want to pay unemployment. Do a search arrest records in multiple states involving domestic violence and theft. She ended up saying she could just rape one of my barely legal employees, so I fired her for sexual harassment. Lesson learned. Check everyone out, no matter how well they interview. Story 22. I share my dad's name, so when you Google my name, you pull up his exploits. Stuff like being arrested for having seven semi-trucks worth of weed in his driveway. Thanks, Dad.